The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one who was and is and is to come, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There are several students about this time of year who are gathered, uh, well, I don't know if they're gathered together, uh, maybe virtually uh, doing a study hall in a Zoom meeting somewhere, but students who are preparing for final exams whether you are uh, in high school or in college, uh, even in graduate studies, this is a season of testing. It is already, at least for many of us, a tough enough season, made more difficult with the restrictions of COVID-19 and trying to learn subjects through online teaching, which you really can only learn in person. So I'm willing to, to bet that there is a little bit of fear, a little bit of anxiety, and probably some hopelessness among students preparing to take their exams. That's exactly how I and most of my colleagues were in our senior year of seminary. When we are required uh, in January to take what is called the general ordination exams, G-O-E, what we refer to as God's own exam. The GOEs are basically a hazing ritual. And what they do is they cover all seven areas of ministry. And you are expected to give an answer to a question of which you have no idea what it could be, except the topic, like theology or music. And you have to do three pages, single-spaced, in three hours. Every morning, we gathered for prayer. And I have to tell you, at the beginning, there was a lot of that hopelessness and anxiety and fear. But through the prophets, or should I say our professors and mentors who told us that they had been through uh, the great ordeal of general ordination exams, that we should not lose hope, not lose our joy, because indeed there would be a time when these exams were over. And you know what? They were right. Still, it's hard in the midst of the difficulty, of tragedy, of confusion, 
to hang on to joy, to hang on to hope, to hang on to faith. And that's exactly what's going on in the reading from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is describing a time when the Israelites return to their home. Israel had been invaded by Babylon in uh, around 558 BC, and they were just now getting to return to their beloved homeland. But when they got there, it didn't look like their homeland. Think about it. Their synagogues were gone. Their homes were gone. All the possessions that they had ever held, gone, destroyed, devastated, as Isaiah says. But there is a promise that God gives that indeed the city will be rebuilt. I dare say some of us have been in the same position as those Israelites standing on the rubble of what used to be our lives or at least the life we knew. Certainly it comes through named storms that crash in from the Gulf. But it's also known through tragedy and through just a general wondering of what's next, God? How can this get any better? What God gives to us is a promise that He will be faithful. We hear that at the end of our reading from Thessalonians. The one who calls you, Almighty God, will be faithful to you. And so we have to hold on to Almighty God and His promise that He will, as our Advent candle tells us, give us faith, hope, and joy. Joy is the theme of this Sunday. We wear rose vestments because rose is the mixing of the purple of Advent and the gold or white of Christmas. It's to remind us that the light is growing stronger. And so, despite what we are hearing on the news, despite what may be going on uh, in our lives, despite whatever any bishop may say about closing Christmas services, the light will come. Jesus will come and shine His light through us. And He will bring with Him to us our hope, our faith, and our joy. For Jesus Christ is Himself our faith, our hope, and our joy. Thanks be to God that Jesus Christ is faithful, even faithful to us.